Um, good morning, family. Um, I am an alcoholic. My name is David, and welcome to the main object big book study of Alcoholics Anonymous, where we take a line by line discovery of the first 164 pages or so of our basic text. And um, I would like to. Um, Actually, could we have, if, if folks are um, chatting, could you uh, mute yourself? I'd appreciate it. And, um, and why don't we get things started with, I'm going to uh, ask uh, my friend, uh, Dave R., put you on the spot, if you would be so kind as to read the preamble, Dave. I would be very glad to. Uh, my name is Dave and I am an alcoholic. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of people who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Dave, thank, thank you, you so much. And um, right now I'd like to ask all of you to join me in inviting God into this meeting this morning with um, uh, reciting the serenity prayer. God, Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. At this meeting, we investigate, as I said, a, the, a line by line reading through the first 164 pages um, of our book, Alcoholics Anonymous. And what we do is uh, we follow a format of um, a way that I was shown um, a short time ago, maybe about a year or two ago, that breaks the main text down into uh, f uh, five categories. Uh, questions, directions, promises, warnings, and history. And what I do to help make it easier to share this message with other people is I highlight uh, four of those categories in specific colors. So I can just flip to a particular page and like, say for instance, um, uh, see a promise I'm looking for or a warning. And those, again, those um, categories are questions, directions, promises, warnings, and history. I leave history um, blank, um, not because it's worth less, but it just makes it uh, easier to um, not have to have five highlighters and the, the colors I use orange green blue and pink are entirely arbitrary so uh, feel free to choose your own colors I got the page wrong forgive me um, just so you know we are in the doctor's opinion but um, if you're in the blue and yellow edition we are on uh, Roman numeral page XXVII27. And uh, I wanted to just also make a, a short announcement. We are, um, we're gonna try something a little bit different, just see how it works. And because this meeting is definitely a work in progress. So um, uh, after a, a couple suggestions and discussion um, with my sponsor, one of the things, um, I'd like to try today is actually um, doing approximately the first 30 minutes or so, actually not even the first 30, the first 24 minutes from this point forward, um, which will be uh, concentrated, I guess you could call it study. So um, I'm going to ask everybody if you have any comments, if you have anything that you would like to share, if you could just make a note and then what we'll do is we will open up the meeting for comments, feedback, thoughts, suggestions, whatever, at um, seven o'clock. And if that works, we'll just stick with it or whatever. But um, um, so um, what I would like to do 
is um, investigate this first section of the doctor's statement. Nick was so uh, gracious uh, a couple weeks ago to, to help us um, see that um, it's actually, uh, we, have, we have two statements from uh, Dr. Silkworth here in the doctor's opinion. And um, Nick pointed out to us that it's actually, the first part is actually a letter. And I did some um, reading and investigating since um, Nick mentioned that. And um, I learned that, yes, um, the first uh, portion or the first letter uh, is a letter that uh, Dr. Silkworth wrote um, actually when they were trying to raise funds to uh, write and publish the big book. So that was sort of like a seal of approval. And then the um, second um, statement is uh, much longer. And that is, um, it was written specifically for this part of the book. And um, parts of it are, are actually taken from a, several paragraphs are taken from a, uh, an essay that Dr. Silkworth wrote. And uh, so I will uh, mention that as we go along and we're, we're going to uh, talk about that a little bit. But as I said, we are on uh, page XXVII in the doctor's opinion where it says the doctor uh, writes. So, and the first paragraph there is as follows. The subject presented in this book seems to be of paramount importance to those afflicted with alcohol, alcoholic addiction. And I have that highlighted in green as a bit of direction. And just as a, a practice now, when I read the big book, I no longer uh, try to assume I know what a word means unless I really do know what it means. And I'm saying this because the word paramount is in there. It's not a word that we typically use or I typically use too much these days. Um, and I assumed I knew what paramount meant. Thought it meant like great, you know, great importance. But um, it doesn't mean exactly that. It's something like that. But when I looked it up, it said, um, more important than anything else. And it may seem to some like I'm splitting hairs there, but when you think about it, especially if we're sharing this with a newcomer, that difference is really important. And that tunes us into the, the subject presented in this book seems to be of more importance than anything else um, to those afflicted with alcoholic addiction. And then um, moving on, it um, the next sentence or paragraph, it's just a one sentence paragraph. Um, I have this um, written as a uh, bit of um, a promise. I have it in blue. Um, and again, this is all subjective. You may see it differently. Um, I say this after many years experience as medical director of one of the oldest hospitals in the country treating alcoholic and drug addiction. There is something else that's important not for me to not just assume I know the meaning of particular words, but also to think about what the culture was like at the time that a particular that the book was written and why i bring that up is because and i have this by the way i, I think i'm i can't remember if i mentioned this is a uh, promise and so i have it in blue but uh, this was written of course in 1939 or maybe a little before there but um it was written at a time when the culture in uh, the West and, and in the United States was that things that were old and enduring were seen as valuable. So it's not like necessarily today where we might say, 
you know, so-and-so is the oldest internet company, you know, around and, you know, we might assume, oh man, so they're like, they're outdated, forget them, let's move on to the hot new thing. That was not the culture at the time. The culture at the time is when you said you were oldest, it was a, a term of uh, reverence. So the reason that I have that as a, a promise is that it's a form of validation. And we saw in the first letter that he did um, that as well. He, he validated the importance of the text and the message he's about to present. And he also uses it to edify uh, the fellowship and the members of the fellowship at that time. Um, so moving on, it says, there was therefore a sense of real satisfaction when I was asked to contribute a few words on a subject which is covered in such masterly detail in this page, in these pages. And that last part, the last phrase there, which is covered in such masterly detail in these pages, I also have as a promise. Uh, and what that says to me is um, it's a promise because it, it creates an anticipation for me in the value of the text that I'm about to read. See, I was not uh, brought up in Alcoholics Anonymous in an environment and in a culture where there was... It's not that it's not that um, the big book wasn't respected, but there wasn't um, when COVID hit and I started to uh, spread out and listen to different meetings and and experience different ways of learning in AA through Zoom. What I found was a reverence for the big book. It wasn't like just hollow idolatry. It wasn't like dogma. It was a real understanding of the spiritual depth that is contained in the book. And so that is when I'm sharing now with people, I really try to convey that. Um, and of course, the most important way, as we'll see a little later on, is through the power of my own example. But moving on, the next paragraph. And this is where we start to get a little bit more in depth. Um, the first part of this I have in green as a bit of direction. Um, we doctors have realized for a long time that some form of moral psychology was of urgent importance to alcoholics, but its application presented difficulties beyond our conception. Again, this is subjective, but how I have that is I have the first two lines. We doctors have realized for a long time that some form of moral psychology was of urgent importance to alcoholics. I have that as direction. And then the rest of the sentence I have as a warning. Not a dire warning, but it's sort of a heads up that Dr. Silkworth is saying that us men of science have difficulty conveying this kind of moral psychology. Now, remember what I mentioned a, a moment ago. I don't, I really try no longer to assume I know what something means unless I'm absolutely sure. And for 30 plus years of my time in Alcoholics Anonymous, I read the phrase, moral psychology, and I said, sure, I know what that is. That's, you know, and and I didn't. And again, what I had to uh, come to is also the notion that I had to confront the idea that, well, maybe even if I know what it is today, I don't know what they meant by it back then. So let me do some investigation. And I just want to hit the pause button here because I'm, I'm doing something I, I really... Um, I don't think this is, you know, I, I checked the traditions and so forth. And um, there is, because um, I always sort of bristle when people bring in outside sources, non-conference approved literature. It's like, Ugh. and um, that's just, you know, my thing. And then I realized and it was pointed out to me that there's no tradition against that. 
And so I'm saying that because I'm going to bring in, I'm going to introduce a piece of outside literature. But I think in this case, it's a little bit um, different than just bringing in, you know, like a, a Wayne Dyer, not that Wayne Dyer is bad or whatever, but, you know, saying like trying to structure a meeting around a Wayne Dyer quote, quote or something. There is a book that came out about a year and a half, two years ago called Writing the Big Book by um, William Schaeber. And there's a reason that I'm bringing it in at, at this specific time. It's a big, it's, it's, it is also a big book. It is um, almost 800 pages, um, but it's fascinating. And it talks in uh, incredible detail about the actual process of writing the big book and the founding of Alcoholics Anonymous. The reason that I am bringing it up at this time is I tried to do some investigation as to what do they mean by moral psychology. He's saying moral psychology is important. And um, so I did some uh, reading and I looked on Wikipedia and I found a couple things. and. Um, they talk just in general that it's the study of moral development. So if we just hold it right there, we say, look back at that sentence. We doctors have realized for a long time that some form of moral psychology is needed for alcoholics. Um, it was a virgin importance to alcoholics, meaning that um, we were morally undeveloped. And I would have taken great offense to that when I came in, but the reality is I have ample evidence in my fourth steps that I was um, morally undeveloped. And I see a note there about putting the information in the chat, and I certainly will. And I will also attach it to the, um, um, in the description of the recording of this uh, meeting. I should have mentioned that as well, forgive me. We are recording, but just audio only. And that is posted, we have a YouTube account, which I will post as well. Um, again, everything's audio, we are within the bounds of the uh, traditions. But back to this, the reason that I bring this up is that there is on page um, 139 of Schoenberg's book, Schoenberg's book, uh, writing the big book, it talks about um, moral psychology. And I think it's so important to understanding our disease and what Dr. Silkworth meant when he's writing this, that I'd like to share a small bit of that with all of you. And uh, I even highlighted it. This is from page um, 139 in that book. In this article, because they're talking about um, this thing about moral psychology came originally came from an article that Dr. Silkworth wrote called Reclamation of the Alcoholic. And I'm going to also link to that in the um, meeting notes as well. So you can download that. Um, but in this article, the doctor is clear that the primary function of moral psychology is to address the underlying egotism found in alcoholics whose interests center entirely in themselves. And when successfully applied, it liberates them to the point where they begin to ask how they can help others. The purpose of moral psychology then is to assist alcoholics in overcoming their perspective of extreme self-centeredness and encourage them to adopt an attitude of consideration and care for others. In Silkworth's opinion, this shift of perspective away from self and toward others was of paramount importance, there's that word paramount again, was of paramount importance in keeping alcoholics from taking their next drink. So suddenly this notion of, and I will uh, include that quote as well in the um, meeting notes, but that notion of needing to get out of our self-centeredness and connect with others in order to overcome this malady, this disease, what they, they don't call it a disease in the book, they call it a malady or an illness, is so critical. 
And again, this was a very different message than what I was presented with when I was brand new, which was, you know, don't drink, go to meetings, stay with the herd. No one, join the AA bowling league. No one said join the AA bowling leagues, but that was the message that came out, which is all good, but it didn't get at the underlying spiritual illness I had. So um, this notion of moral psychology, now with this, what we also see is a theme that underscores this first section of Dr. Silkworth's statement. And I should have said at the beginning, forgive me, that just arbitrarily I, I broke, since this is a much longer statement than the first letter, I've, I've broken it down just for um, sharing purposes into five sections. And we are in the first section right now. And the theme in this first section is the, interwe the importance of interweaving scientific and spiritual principles. And we'll see a little bit more of that as we go along. So um, so we have a better understanding now of what he may have meant when he talked about moral psychology. It's of urgent importance to alcoholics, but its application presented difficulties beyond our conception. Important now to step back also and look at the time in which this was written. Early 20th century. Science technology, the new thing was seen as the ultimate. Science was everything because he talks about our, in the next sentence, what with our ultra modern standards, our scientific approach to everything, comma, and I just have that part blank, but, but it's, you could even put that in green in terms of direction. And I may highlight that, that in green. Actually, I'm going to do it now because I realize, because the direction that's important there for me to, to see is that notion of ultra-modern standards, scientific approach to everything, that was seen as the greatest standard there could be. And what Dr. Silkworth is saying is he's, he's kind of pulling at the foundation of this reverence for science and saying science is good, science is important, but spirit needs to be considered as well. And for the time that it was written, that is a radical statement. Why it's important now, besides just a history lesson, is when we are conveying this to somebody, even if they're not a scientist or a person of science, you could even generalize and say um, logic, the thing we call common sense, is important. But spirit is even more important. But it's really about an integration of the two, an interweaving. So what with our ultra-modern standards, our scientific approach to everything, we are, here it is, we are perhaps not well equipped to apply the powers of good that lie outside our synthetic knowledge. That's a powerful statement because he's really, in a humble way, built himself up or framed himself as a medical authority. And he's saying, even though I'm a medical authority, I am not well equipped to apply the powers of good that lie outside our synthetic knowledge. And what he's talking about is he's contrasting synthetic knowledge, which is intellectual knowledge. You could also call it book learning versus spiritual experience. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. What do we got? We got four minutes. Um, so I, I want to see if how far down I can get to the end of the page. Um, David, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you just tell me what that paragraph was? Was that a warning? I The only part that I have as warning is its applications presented difficulties beyond our conception. The rest of that paragraph I have in green as, a, as direction. 
So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, many years ago, one of the leading contributors to this book came under our care in, the hus in this hospital and I just have that um, not highlighted because that's basically history. And, it, and of course, here we know that he's talking about Bill W. And while here, now the rest of this sentence I have in green as direction. While here, he acquired, he acquired some ideas which he put into practice at once. I have that in green is direction. And I will say, I'll go out on a limb and say, um, that might even be some of the most important direction in this statement by Dr. Silkworth. And if I had to break it down even further, the two, mo for me, okay, you may see it differently, your sponsor may see it differently, and I totally respect that. But breaking it down even further, the two most important words I have, I see in, in this sentence are at once. He acquired some ideas which he put into practice, practical application at once. How many times have some of us, and I'll put myself at the front of the list here, have found themselves thinking, I just don't know enough to share this. I'm going to mess it up. Well, we could we could go on for an hour about um, the shaky foundations of that thinking. But I think what's important is that it's not about delivering a, perf a perfect message. It's about creating a spiritual channel that will keep me sober because it's only through that spiritual channel of selflessness, selfless giving, that I stay sober. It's not through my knowledge. And the unfortunate thing, and, and I, I'll just say this, is that the one unfortunate thing about a meeting like this or a study like this is that, you know, here it is, you know, um, uh, me talking for a long time and people, some people sharing about uh, the big book, but it creates this false impression that the value or the power in sobriety is in expertise. And I'm saying that, you know, and obviously it's ironic and it's sort of hypocritical because um, I've been talking for the last 24 minutes and, you know, giving you my quote unquote expertise, but it's just its experience and I think what's important is to really see that um, we need to break through that illusion of expertise and of reverence that we just have for time and because the real reverence needs to be for that power and the power that's available to any one of us at any given moment that's the real power and it is seven o'clock, so I just want to say we're going to shift gears slightly. So um, would anyone like to offer any thoughts or comments on what we've read so far or how it relates to you in um, your sobriety? Sticking, sticking as much as you can to the text that we've, we've talked about. Yes, Juanita. Yes, thank you so much, David. And the reason why I raised my hand because I, I put this as a promise and I also put it at direction. And all I wrote here, and it just came to me, because we have a mental def deficiency. Because it starts in our mind, and you said that. And I thought, put it as direction, too, because there's no wrong in anything that you feel and think. But my experience, and I say that, and I'm make it quick, at four years old, saying to myself, and I'm 71 now, and I remember it clearly, at four years old saying, my mother doesn't know how to be a mother. I wanted her to let me do such and such a thing she would not allow it when I got to school, found out I was right. I was right. But at four years old, what does that tell me? And I've been on this roller coaster with my mind and not thinking, drinking, and wasn't drinking, but as I got older, I had to find something to help me to get where I could be recognized and noticed that 
there's something going on because I don't fit. Do that make sense? I don't Absolutely. fit. And I'm saying at four, and this went all the way to 43, and now I'm fitting. I'm starting to fit in because I'm starting to understand what's going on with my mind. I could, I get, I can't stay sober because of my mind. I get drunk because of my body. That's the same thing of what how I feel with life. I don't feel that way today because I have a I have an outline to live between the big book and my Bible and going to church and staying here. I had to say that because I see that that mental deficiency even without the drink, but learning how to live on a spiritual plane. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. Yeah, Kathy, please. Yeah, so the last paragraph, um, specifically <clears throat> the uh, acquiring some ideas, uh, which she put into practical experience at once, uh, when you made the comment, you know, the uh, uh, carrying the message and, and feeling as though we're inadequate and, and that really we don't have to carry a perfect message, that in a sense we're bringing, making room for the spirit to become that channel um, for the spirit to act. You know, it just brings to mind many, many occasions, you know, where the sponsee doesn't want to go on and sponsor another person because they just don't, they just don't have enough. And, um, and ultimately, isn't that an evidence of the selfishness? I've got to have a perfect message so that the what the sponsee thinks highly of me when it's not about me that it is, in fact, to bring our very experience. While it appears limited, we still had a transformation. We still managed to put the drink down one day at a time. And we did that through some act of God. And that is, in fact, what we're transferring to the next person, not this wealth of understanding this book or any other book for that matter. It is our actual experience um, applying from the very start what we've been instructed to apply, the taking directions, the the humility that's involved in saying, I don't got it. So uh, that's all I have to share. Kathy, thank you. And uh, I see uh, Christiane's hand out. So yes, please, Christiane. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, so glad I can participate in your meeting from so far away. And thank you for, for all of this. Um, I, I am Christiana, an alcoholic, and um, for me, uh, the the reading about the sentence, some form of moral psychology, was of urgent importance to alcoholics. It brought me um, right back to my very first meeting of uh, AA, which was in Chicago, and um, I remember being there, being scared, and, you know, just being at the end of my rope uh, on so many different fronts. And um, then they read how it works. And I heard it for the first time. And, you know, it just brought such peace and calm to me. And and the, the fact that in there I was going to have to deal again with... Um, my relationship with my higher power. And, and it, it, it was sort of the whole steps were like the moral psychology. And it was one of those key things that I had been fighting with and dissolution with and had no answers for and had rebelled against. And actually, when I heard him read, fell deep down like, yeah, I do need to deal with this. I do need to do this. It, I felt like relieved that I was going to have to if, if, if I wanted to live and stay sober and that, you know, I, I wasn't going to do it alone. And the fact that it said, as, as you understand him about the higher power and then, you know, the way the gentleness and, and the, the, the big wide avenue I was allowed to walk on and be with and have ideas about, but that, you know, I, I sort of was going to have to deal with it. And it just felt I had no idea that this was the answer to my problem. And uh, I'm like so grateful that it was. And um, anyway, thank you for that. Christiane, thank you. Uh, Rich and or John, yes, please. Good morning. 
Wow. You know, um, I've wondered what moral psychology is, but surprisingly, I was too, I didn't look it up and I look up everything, but I, I didn't look it up and, and uh, I still don't quite understand what it means. And, um, and I looked it up even a little bit more and I'm still not 100% sure what it means, but I do know this, <laughs> that my first sponsor, when we were reading the big book, he was saying that the answer is spirituality. And I don't remember if it was in this meeting or I talked to someone else or I just heard this, but you know, like uh, Dr. Carl Jung in Austria, uh, or it was in Switzerland, uh, who is a renowned psychologist, was actually very spiritual, but he couldn't say anything about spirituality in his day because he would be considered a quack and all his colleagues would dismiss him. So for the sake of his reputation, he never talk about higher power. And um, from what I've been reading a little bit more about moral psychology, it's, you know, morality is about understanding the difference between good and bad. And, and, uh, and, and the psychology is the emotions, the egotism, the, all the things that stir inside us. And we all know this so well because, my, um, you know, I don't think we're human beings. We're, we're human feelings in many ways. And our feelings uh, can get triggered. And um, are we going to make bad decisions like drinking? Or are we going to make good decisions? Uh, and for me, my good decision is, is, is uh, a higher power who I choose to call God. And, um, and I think the psychiatrists who were involved in AA and everything like that, they couldn't mention spirituality because they'd be left, especially back then, maybe even still today now. So anyway, that's my two cents. John, thank you. And what have we got? We've got about seven minutes. So let's see if um, I can get uh, through this next paragraph because there's some uh, powerful stuff there. Um, so he put his ideas into application at once. And again, this echoes a uh, impression, an observation that Dr. Silkworth makes in his first letter, where he talked about um, putting these ideas into practice immediately and uh, with other alcoholics. Remember that? Impressing upon them that they too do the same. So now it says, and this first part of this sentence here, I have as green direction, he requested the privilege of being allowed to tell his story to other patients here. And um, because at this point, Bill was going out into um, bar rooms and people on the street, people in delicatessens and trying to spread the word. And he was getting frustrated and because um, he wasn't having any success. Um, and we'll see a little later on as to exactly why he was struggling so much but um again that notion of spirit versus science and science being seen as the ultimate at the time bill is not a man of science he's a drunk who had a spiritual experience and he wants to come into a hospital setting and share it with other drunks and that was seen as a sort of a radical proposition. But that notion, the reason I have it as a bit of direction is because it's, again, that direction to share this message and the importance of sharing it and the importance of recognizing the power that we have. And this paragraph is really going to drive that home. The power, if you are a sober alcoholic in this meeting right now, whether you believe it or not, you possess a power that other people need. So, um, and with some misgiving, we consented. So they allowed him to start sharing it with other people. The important part about this, this is as well, is it allowed Dr. Silkworth to observe Bill sharing the message and then give him some critical direction a little later on. And we'll, we'll probably hit on that next week. But um, the cases, the next sentence I have as a promise in blue, the cases we have followed through have been most interesting. In fact, many of them are amazing. Remember what our friend John just shared, which was entirely like on the money. It's like um, Carl Jung and many medical professionals of their time were hesitant to talk about spirituality. And think about what Dr. Silkworth is doing right now. 
in saying these cases are amazing. Then that, the rest of the paragraph, from the, uh, the next line uh, through to the end, I have a double highlighted as both direction and promise. The unselfishness of these men as we have come to know them, the entire absence of profit motive and their community spirit is indeed inspiring to one who has labored long and wearily in this alcoholic field. So there's a promise there in that through if, if I can conduct myself in a way that may be considered um, unselfish and without profit motive and in a community spirit, I have the ability to carry something that is of incredible value. The other thing, and we've talked about this uh, previously, is remember that thing we talked about, sideways direction? So what you see time and time again throughout the big book is not necessarily, um, I'm just looking at Kathy because she's the first screen on my little checkerboard here. Kathy, here's what you need to do. You need to do this. And alcoholics rebel against that. But if they see, if they say, you see Joe over there? Here's what Joe did. And here's why it worked for him. And so there's direction there in that saying, maybe, maybe they're saying to me, let me put it this way. I need to be without profit motive. I need to have community spirit. I need to be unselfish. This next sentence, which closes out the paragraph, drives it home in an even bigger way. They believe in themselves and still more in the power, capital P power, which pulls chronic alcoholics back from the gates of death. And by believing in myself, even more pointedly, and believing in the power of the message that I have and allowing myself to be a channel, as a recovering alcoholic, I have the power or I can channel the power so that spirit can restore life. We are, uh, we've got about a minute left, but um, I see two hands. So yes, Kathy, please go right ahead. Very quickly. Um, so when Bill is asking to tell his story to the patients there, uh, those who needed help and wanted help, right, needed help and wanted help versus the ones in the bars that he was attempting to impart this wisdom. And the, <clears throat> the misgiving, the resistance initially uh, that he met with the doctors, in this case, Dr. Selfworth, and where Dr. <laughs> Selfworth himself shows a level, demonstrates a level of humility that says, what do we got to lose? I've thrown everything I've known and studied at this and let's see. And he opens up, he becomes unwittingly the channel for this spirit to start. He did, not Bill necessarily, but he did. And allow Bill to share, as you just said, as the book just says, in his unselfish way, no profit, no nothing. And then he, Dr. Silkworth, and the medical folks around him were amazed 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 by miracles taking place before them i feel this paragraph is really amazing thanks for letting me share thank you yes john please cl help close us out yeah finish it up in 15 seconds uh, i read only the black and i don't get too far ahead in uh in my thoughts or commentary but uh, dr silkworth uh, affectionately known as silky to some people uh in spite of all his efforts, all his scientific knowledge, which he claims he has, he qualifies himself as a doctor, is telling us that, you know what, in spite of all of that, I've discovered something that has never occurred to me before. 
It's never been in my province whatsoever. We discovered a man who discovered a program, some kind of revelation he had, and Silky is telling us that this is something that he thinks is really, really uh, going to be important and effective in the uh, treatment of alcoholism. And he, he's, he's testifying uh, to us in this writing that, uh, hey, there is something that is new, that has come up on the horizon, that has never been explored before, but somebody has discovered it. I think we need to pay attention to it. That's all I have. John, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for your comments and, uh, of course, attendance today. Um, if you, uh, I can see that some people have left their um, phone number in the chat. And if you'd like to be added to the list, please do that. And, um, and those texts, that'll be for te reminder text messages. Those also have, those uh, messages will also have links to our YouTube channel and the notes uh, from uh, today's uh, meeting. And um, also, if you're in the mood now, just feel like you're getting started for meetings, um, come join us at Good Morning Avalon Online. The info for that is in the chat. And uh, we're gonna close it up here. We will finish out, there's only uh, a few lines left in the first section of this uh, Dr. Silkworth statement. And then we enter into the second section, which I titled um, The Divine Allergy. And we'll learn more about that next week. So I hope that you can be here. And now I'm going to invite you to all join me in closing out the meeting with the Lord's Prayer. So Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, will thy will be done, be done. on earth, as it, on is, earth in as heaven. it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and and forgive us our trespasses, as, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Wow, we stayed.